Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to Mr. Grable and our ELA class here in grade three, where we read collections, and we have a new collections book called Beneath the Surface. Yes, we're going down into the ocean. Interesting world down there. Beneath the Surface. And today, our first photo essay Sounds like it's nonfiction. Is called Coral at Home on a Reef by K. M. DeSelas. Here we go. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, the coral reef neighborhood. That is, thousands of kinds of animals, including this reef shark. Call coral reef home. They depend on it for hiding, hunting, breeding, and eating. Want to meet some other neighbors? Just keep on reading. Whoa, this looks like a good photo essay. Happy to be stuck. Sitting on the reef. A file shell, that's the picture below, tastes the water with its long tentacles. Then it uses them to catch tiny bits of floating food. But sitting on the reef can be a problem for a creature that can't hang on. The waves could easily sweep it away. So the file shell has a trick. It attaches itself to the coral with sticky threads. That way, it's stuck tight to its coral home, right where it wants to be. So cool. Next page. Big guys, little guys. Coral reefs are hard, stony shapes built by tiny animals called polyps. Each polyp builds a little house around itself. A coral reef is made of thousands of these houses built on top of each other over the years. A reef is many things to many creatures. For a white tip reef shark, that's on page four, the one before here, it's a place to find fishy meals. Mm. But for the violet spotted reef lobster, that's the picture below, it's a place full of holes for hiding from enemies. This is interesting stuff below the sea. Hmm. Yeah. Below the surface, I guess. Not below the sea, Mr. G. Below the surface. Looking for lunch? With its glowing stripes, this little triple fin, that's the picture above, is a sight to see. And you may say, it's sightseeing too. The fish uses the coral as a lookout tower, propping itself up on its fins as if they were hands. Then it watches for tiny creatures that might be good to eat. Mm. Stick it to them! Christmas trees on a coral reef? Nope. These are strange animals called Christmas tree worms. That's on your right. Each worm lives in a hard tube. It is built on the coral. If a hungry fish comes along, the worm quickly disappears into its tube. All that's left is a hard, sharp spike. Now, if that fish tries to wolf down the worm, it might get a sharp surprise. Cruising the neighborhood. 
A new dubrink is a fancy snail without a shell. And that's the picture above. It cruises the coral neighborhood eating algae. Algae are tiny plants that grow on the reef. As the nudibranch moves along, its bright colors warn enemies that it tastes bad. Meals are just an arm's length away. The coral reef has plenty of cozy holes for an octopus, that's on your left, to live in. It hides there until a tasty crab or other creature come along, comes along. When one does, watch out! A sucker-covered arm snakes out of the hole and grabs the prey. Then the octopus pulls the wriggling catch into the hole for this coral reef creature. Dinner is served. Mmm, mmm, good. There's more. Oh boy. That is exciting. That's the phone, but we're going to ignore it. We know it's not for us. Okay, here we go. The long nose for nipping. For the long-nosed butterfly fish, that's on your right, the coral reef is like a big lunch counter. That's because this fish likes to munch on tiny coral polyps. Lots of fish's mouths would be too big to grab hold of the little polyps. But the butterfly fish has a tiny mouth at the end of a long, pointy snout. It's the perfect tool for plucking polyps from their stony coral houses. Sneaky snacking. This fish, fish lizard, oh sorry, this lizard fish below, that's the picture below, is lying on the coral waiting for a small fish or other creature to get close enough to catch. Some fish may think they could take a little nip out of the big fish and dart away quickly. But the hungry lizard fish would probably dart faster. Just us corals here. The trumpet fish to your right, is tricky. It hides tail up in a kind of coral shaped like, sorry, it hides tail up in a kind of coral shaped like its body. When a small fish swims near, the trumpet fish goes after it. The prey fish may see the trumpet fish coming but that pencil-thin body looks pretty small from the front. And if the prey fish gets fooled, the trumpet fish gets fed. Mm -hmm. A nose job. A perfect eel on your left. Has a long, skinny body, perfect for fitting into long, skinny holes in the reef. The eel's feathery nostrils are long, too. They're good for tasting or smelling odors in the water, so the eel can tell when prey or enemies are near without having to come out of its hole. Guess you could say its nose. Nose! <laughs> Leaf this fish alone. This sailfin leaf fish, below in your picture, lies on the reef waiting. It looks like a leaf waving in the waves. But when a small fish comes close to the leaf, the leaf leaps to life and eats it up. 
Now that your visit is over, all the neighbors want you to know a coral reef is a nice place to visit. But for them, it's a great place to live. That is interesting stuff. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy the world above and reading about the surface beneath. Bye-bye.